hey guys what's up everyone welcome or welcome back again to another video tutorial lesson from the apex predator billiards training club my name is apex elenio your aspiring professional pool player and pool instructor now in today's video tutorial we are back at it again with another compact analytical 10 ball break and run analysis where i spoke about in my last upload the importance of time management skills at the table and you would have seen in my last video that my average shooting time was approximately 31.83 seconds as discussed but i felt that in addition to walking you through my thought process of how to execute proper positional play cue ball control pattern play and just in general making decisive and accurate decisions on the table i thought that proper time management skills was something that i felt that as a student of the game and a student of my own game i needed to really dive into so we're going to jump into this and at the end of each rack i will give you a report based on what i have calculated so of course if this is the first time here on the channel do not forget to smash the subscribe button below turn on your post notification bell leave some positive questions and comments and of course do not forget to smash the like button let's jump right into the video now all right so i'm gonna be starting off traditionally with the break shot here and i wanted to make a comparison between the previous video that i made which was coming from a very calm quiet training session to a more competitive training session where i'm playing with players that are a lot better well, not a lot better, but just as good as I am. And I wanted to compare and contrast my shooting time under each different environment. Now, from the break shot there, which was not successful, obviously, you would have seen there where I didn't put a ball, but my opponent doesn't have a shot. And obviously, he has to go for a push out. Now, you would have seen there on the replay where he definitely overruled the position, his intended position for the rollout you would have seen that he wanted to have me had a look at the one but he overruled the cue ball here and now i have a clear look at the one now decision time is key i need i have an i have a pot on the one but i'm not feeling very comfortable in terms of potting the one and getting position on the two which is obviously in the middle of the table so i thought that maybe a safety would have been more ideal again as i said guys in order for you to be a very consistent pool player you have to be able to make critical decision crucial decision on the extreme situations sometimes you're gonna have a pot that you know you can make and you have to refuse making the pot for example i had a pot on the one but why didn't i go for the pot because i didn't feel comfortable in getting position on the two so i decided to play safe which worked out to be a rather very containing safety here not one that is excellent because of course you'll see here that lee was able to execute their a return safety now i apologize for him blocking the camera there but you'll see that he didn't really leave me with any read easy shot here on the one uh i have a kick i have a i have a look at the one but it's really tough and as i said time management skills at the table is crucial when it comes to the entertainment aspect of pool when you have an audience watching everybody loves to see precision pool but at the end of the day it must be done within a decisive and timely manner and so i felt like i needed to really analyze this aspect of my game here now clearly i went down and i shot at that ball a bit too fast i think i was feeling a bit rushed well not rushed but i was feeling a little bit of pressure obviously i'm playing with a very very good pool player who is capable of running out from anywhere so i think i kind of rushed that shot there on the one and it really messed me up here now lee miller obviously got a ball in her ear and has first option here to run out and there you'll see um i have the cue ball markers at the side here showing you exactly what spin if any that both players are using so lee miller played position from the one there to the two leaving himself with a natural angle to play with top spin to come back over for the three now the three here is in a tricky tricky position right and it's not tricky in terms of getting position on the four it's just tricky because it's at the side pocket there near to the nipple so he doesn't have much room to move that cue ball and as you can see um he's very apologetic in terms of you'll see here on the replay how badly 
he would have missed that three ball that actually went away from the rail but these pockets are a little bit close to four and a half maybe four and three quarter inch so he got away with that one hence why the apology there but um definitely that shot was not executed the way he wanted to nevertheless it's down and he has a shot here on the four now again i think that him missing this shot here would have been a case here maybe just because the three ball was not put as cleanly as he wanted to might have rushed a little bit again as i mentioned guys for the purpose of the video time management is key making decisions i'm not saying that he rushed the shot i'm merely saying that i think that an extra few seconds on the shot would have actually made maybe some sort of defense there he may have used a here of left spin maybe throwing the ball a bit too much but nevertheless we he he nevertheless um that's the result he missed the shot and now he has left me with a partially open table here now the five ball tricky position here i've used some low right spin there coming around definitely got a little bit fortunate on that five i think i if i remember correctly i was actually trying to come in between the seven and the nine to get a pot at the five into that top right but fortunately there the cue ball landed quite perfectly there on the five for um a, a even better shot all right now here putting the five into the side and you'll see here on the replay that sometimes it's so very difficult to really predict the cue ball's part when the object ball and the cue ball are so close there you'll see on the replay there that i had used a little bit of right throwing the five ball into the pocket and just opening up the angle now i really wanted to avoid the six but i got a favorable bump here on the six and landed perfectly to just use a simply stun follow shot here coming down back to the middle of the table for the seven now all the problems are solved and all the remaining balls on the table are sitting like sitting ducks all right just waiting to say hey pot me all right now obviously as the game goes further and further and it gets less complicated the shot clock is going to be not so much in effect but like i said guys managing your time well doesn't mean that you're going to be rushing the shot a lot of the times i find myself missing some uncharacteristic shots simply because i am playing a bit too fast sometimes we get a little bit animated over exaggerated a little bit anxious too antsy and we sometimes go too fast playing shots that just maybe requires an extra five or seven seconds for precision all right now here on the nine and potting nine with a little bit of inside left here straightening out the cue ball to get dead straight in on the 10. all right so one too many mistakes in that rack i thought that the rack was well executed when i got my chance at the table i executed what i needed to my decision making my position play was fairly okay right needed a bit more precision but you know we grow and we get better and better rock by rock so from that particular rock there you will see where lee miller had a i calculated the math he had a average shooting time of 16.1 seconds and i had an average shooting time there of 24.5 seconds which is a little bit lower than my previous average according to my previous tutorial video all right so we're going to be jumping into rock two now i'm going to be playing with a yet another capable player here by the name of sean all right the previous player that was i was playing with was lee so let us see if again it's the same particular tournament it's just a different rock and i want to really make a comparison i really want to analyze whether or not i am a slow player medium slow player or a fast player i've been labeled as a slow player i really think that i'm a moderate shooting player but you know for me statistics is important and being a student of the game is going to be crucial to this all right so rock number two here again starting off with the break not a perfectly executed break shot there very um successful in that one getting a ball down cue ball parked in the middle of the table there again you see on my cue ball marker just using a here of follow with a medium hard stroke there i was a little bit animated in terms of you know a little bit you know antsy as i said really um got me in a groove at the moment here so have a look at the one here i have a cut but this bank shot here is lying dead perfect using the dr dave billiards once again that system is so so reliable one more than twice bank system 
that laid perfectly on the 70 30 track line perfectly for an excellent bank shot just using a bit of stun follow here and getting perfect position here on the two now the three ball here is in a tricky position and i think that you know i'm the type of player as i mentioned in a couple of my tutorials that i love when the cue ball is moving around the angles moving around the table following a natural path and here i decided to use a bit of top left now i'm not so certain because at the time i felt like using the spin and coming two three reels back out to the middle of the table would have been a better shot i'm not sure if maybe if i had just rolled it in I, I, I was a little bit concerned about bumping into the five and snookering myself on the three so I decided to just move the cue ball around the angles here and perhaps get some sort of shot. Now decision time again. You see me walk around here, I'm having a look at the thin cut but I'm not really sure. I think that cutting this three ball in is a little bit risky. Cue ball control is going to be compromised here. So in the moment there, I decided to play a safety, which as I said, a lot of the times when we are under pressure, we are playing in certain events, you'll find that decisions are made in between shots. It didn't take me more than a second there to switch from being an offensive attempt there to being a defensive attempt. Now it was a very well executed safety there, a little bit tricky in terms of where the cue ball landed. I was very fortunate that it kissed onto the eight here had it leaked a little bit, then maybe Sean would have gotten a chance there to pot the three or even had a better kick at the three. But it was a devastating hook there on that three. Well executed safety, regardless of how fast or slow I made that decision, it worked out in my favor here. All right. So Sean took approximately 21 seconds to make that decision. He gave me ball in hand. Now I have ball sitting on the table like sitting ducks here now this particular shot here took me approximately uh 56 seconds and again as i said you managing your time on the table whether it be in a tournament or being in a competitive environment gambling or whatever the case may be decisions will affect how fast or slow you play and sometimes when you play too fast you make rush decisions when you play too slow you overthink again as i said it really depends on how you see the game now you'll notice that majority of my position play throughout this video as you see there on the ball marker you will realize that most of the time i try to play position where i don't have to use spin there are occasions where i may have overrolled or under roll and i need to get back in line for example I really needed to leave an angle here on the four, but I rolled up a bit too close to the short reel. Now it's forcing me here to use some sort of spin. Now, you will see there that I went around to have a look at the five to see if it passes the 10 into this bottom right here. And again, I tried to use a slight bit of check side. Now, the position that I got here is very unfortunate and very careless in my opinion. You'll notice that I criticize my game as well as I would constructively criticize anyone else's game. I really had two decisions. I was playing for two shots, two pots. I was playing for the five into the bottom right and I was also playing for the five into the side. And that pretty much wedged me up here, leaving me with a bank. Now, as to why this bank shot got ridiculously close to potting, I'm just using a bit of stun roll here stunning through for the six as to why this five ball defied gravity is beyond my comprehension but it was really really unfortunate here and on on a different circumstance based on what you're about to see here it would obviously mean that i would have lost this rock here which would have been a heartbreaking loss, right because actually this particular tournament i won it and i felt like really for example here sean went down took about 18 seconds to really make that shot and carelessly scratched which in my opinion as i as i said it's arguable it's arguable that playing fast or slow can affect how well you execute your run out on the table or how well you execute your plan but i think that proper time management is key but at the same time uh slow is smooth and smooth is in fact fast so you just have to know how to make a decision 
and meet them in a decisive and timely manner there so ball in hand results there for me uh unfortunate for sean unfortunate for me that five ball should have not defied gravity but lead me nicely here from the seven to the eight using a bit of high right little use a little bit more than high right ended a little bit awkward on that eight but it was good enough for me to just spot and now i am all out here now you'll notice here on this shot that on the nine ball here um i may have played the position incorrectly you'll see here as i go through my stroke here notice that the cue ball died off that rail there that would have been a contribution because of the speed of the stroke i didn't really follow through as much and you'll see that it went a bit forward and it died i didn't want to hit into the rail too hard with too much speed and uh kill the cue ball and it did exactly what i didn't want but nevertheless still here i have a pot on the 10 tough pot gotta calm myself down on shots like these guys you have to just remain calm compose smooth just ensure that you find the potting angle and you aim as close as you can to the vertical axis and to pot this shot here for the win all right so it was a well executed rack uh nevertheless it wasn't a break and run but it definitely had some value in it as you can see there all right so this particular video here had quite a bit uh we spoke about position play cue ball control and most importantly as i said i've been adding this new feature to my racks we were talking about time management now in this particular rack here sean's average shooting time at the table was 19.5 seconds my shooting my average shooting time was 31 seconds they are there again ending up with a close average to uh my previous from my practice sessions there all right now of course i do hope that you enjoyed this analytical rack here i will see you in another tutorial until then do not forget to smash the subscribe button below leave some positive questions and comments and until then take care and i'll see you soon and very soon until then bye bye